Hi, I'm John Townsend from James Townsend and & Son, and many people ask in the comments of our videos, they ask, John, have you ever made something you really didn't like? Well, today we're going to find out. In a previous video, I talked about the broad categories of food preservation techniques used in the 18th century, including salting, pickling, curing, and other methods. Obviously, they didn't have the rich resources of foods that we have available to us today. And they planned their foods around the, uh, the items that they had available at the time, things that were in season. And when they had extra, they had fairly primitive ways to preserve them. Now, like I said in previous episodes, we know a lot more today about foodborne uh, pathogens and how dangerous improperly preserved foods can be. So uh, make sure to use caution when using any of these kind of uh, original recipes. Now that we have that out of the way, let me show you what we're going to make today. Pickled smelt. You're going to love this. Or maybe not. Now, smelt are a small sardine-like family of fish that uh, live in either fresh or salt water. They migrate up beaches and inland streams at various times of the year to spawn. Now, I love smelt, but I always have them fried. And fried smelt were popular in the 18th century, too. But what were you supposed to do if you had more smelt than you could eat? Well, you would preserve them, very much like uh, we would preserve sardines today. The recipe we're using today for pickled smelt comes from Hannah Glass's 1784 cookbook, The Art of Cookery. However, you can find this recipe virtually verbatim in many other uh, 18th century cookbooks. Now, the title of this recipe is a little misleading. It's called Pickled Smelt. And technically, pickles, uh, when you, when you uh, preserve using pickling, it's, uh, it's preserved by a, an acidic environment, like, say, vinegar. But this recipe does not use vinegar at all. It actually uses saltpeter and salt. So technically it's a curing or a salt cure. This recipe calls for a quarter of a peck of smelt. Now if fresh smelt is not available in your area, you can check the seafood section at your grocery store and you will likely find frozen smelt. That's what we've got here. It's already dressed and ready to use. The recipe calls for black pepper, about a half an ounce, which turns out to be two tablespoons. Also a half an ounce of nutmeg, which is also two tablespoons, and a quarter ounce of mace, which is say three and a half teaspoons. Next, we need a half ounce of saltpeter and four ounces of bay salt. Now, saltpeter can be difficult to find these days, but luckily we have available to us uh, Morton's Tender Quick. You can usually find this in your uh, canning section at a uh, hardware store or at a grocery store, and that is a great equivalent. It has the same ratio of, uh, of chemicals in here. It's going to work exactly the same way. For this kind of uh, preservation technique, you really need a crock or a jar. And the jars that we have in our catalog, we've got a one quart and a two quart jar. These uh, stoneware jars are made right here in Indiana and they are perfect for this kind of job. I'll make sure to put a link down in the text of this uh, video right to these jars. Now it's time to pack the smelt into our uh, little crock here. And the first thing we're going to do is to put in a layer of our uh, of our salt and spices. And we're going to get in maybe an eighth of an inch uh, thick layer here in the bottom. And now let's pack some smelt in. You want them to lay it in just, just one thick, uh, one fish thick. Uh, now let's put in three bay leaves. And now we just repeat this over again. If you follow this recipe exactly, you'll probably need two of these one quart uh, crocks or possibly uh, a two quart crock. So to finish this off, the recipe calls for topping this uh, off with a heated or boiling uh, port wine. If you don't have port wine, you can use a sweet red wine also. To finish this off, we just uh, put our lid on and then we'll cover this crock up uh, with a coarse uh, cloth and tie it off so that uh, it doesn't get knocked over. Now, normally in the time period, you'd store this in a cool, uh, dry place, and you would probably leave it for a couple of weeks before you bothered to open it, or as long as you needed to store it before you'd want to use it. Now, in a modern setting, I would suggest, for safety purposes, that you actually store yours in the refrigerator. And again, 
uh, you can let these set for at least a couple of weeks before you want to dip in and see how they turned out. Now this batch of, uh, of uh, smelt we did a couple of weeks ago, so these are ready to try out. And another thing, um, many times it's mentioned in these pickling recipes to make sure not to put your fingers in the pickle and always use a, uh, a utensil like a, a wooden spoon to dig those out or else you will contaminate that pickle and it will go bad right away. And even they understood that in the 18th century. Well, they, they don't smell bad. Um, they definitely have changed color and a little bit of texture. They've sort of broken down a little bit. So maybe they're good. Um, I guess it's time to try one out. I mean, they've, uh, okay, I'm going to try one out. Let's, let's find out here. There's our, there's our fish. Mmm. Well, they're salty. That's what comes up right away. They're definitely not fishy. They're very spicy. I can see why they would want to uh, have something like this. It's definitely um, something like a garnish. It's not a main dish. Although, I mean, you could put some of these on, say, a bed of rice or something. Uh, or use them as a spice in other dishes. You'll find that in many um, recipes from the 18th century. Definitely much better than I expected. I wouldn't eat them all day, but but they're actually pretty good. Kevin tried these out last night and he's still alive. So I know they're at least semi safe. Uh, you know, if you're interested in this recipe and you really should try it out, they're very interesting, not very fishy. Um, you can find the recipe down in the comment section of, or down in the description section of this video. And also you can find links to those beautiful Crocs. I want to thank everyone for watching. If you're new to our channel, I want to welcome you. Uh, you can subscribe by clicking the button right up here. Uh, also check out our related videos. Thanks so much for watching.